When you retire, you may get a chance to go to football heaven. This is football heaven. Hey guys, welcome to The Mission. I'm your host, Jameer Howerton, and I am super pumped to have you guys joining us here today. As I mentioned, over the course of these next few episodes, we're gonna get the golden opportunity to catch up with Hall of Famers that had a chance to welcome in the new 2022 class into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. You know, it was really big on how uh, we were going to, the Pro Football Hall of Fame was gonna usher in the new class. And uh, it, it's been a great, great experience as we see these stories unfold and you can go to YouTube and watch these unique knocks. But today, we're, we're so honored to be joined by former commissioner of the National Football League and from the centennial class of 2020, Mr. Paul Tagliabu, as I like to call him, commissioner. Commissioner, welcome to the mission, sir. Good afternoon and happy to be with you. I am super pumped to have you, sir. Um, you know, you had the opportunity to knock on the door of Mr. Art McNally, who is the godfather of officiating in the National Football League. Um, before we take a step back and go step by step of that day, when you received the call, Commissioner, what did it mean to you to be notified that you were gonna usher in this new class? Well, it was uh, news not only that I was gonna be part of the ushering in, but it was news as to who the class was. So that was very exciting. And it was exciting to know that Art, you know, was approved. I, didn't know, I knew that was in the winds, but until you knock on the door or, or someone gives you a call, you don't know for sure. So when I learned that Art was in and others like Dick Vermeil and you know, the, the rest of the group, I was really excited and looking forward to doing whatever I could do. How much fun did you have on that day? It was a lot of fun, you know, and going back to when I was first given the opportunity, I, I I thought of how many times did Art McNally knocked on my door when I was commissioned and he was in the officiating department, either heading it up or working with Jerry Seaman or, or you know, dealing with our officiating in NFL Europe. He, he would always be courteous, knock on my door. And even, even if it was open, he was that kind of a guy. So to knock on his door was a good privilege. All right, sir. We'll take a step by step of that day leading up. You're in the car and you're getting, you know, kind of the briefing from the uh, camera crew, if you will, and the executives that were on hand. Um, but when you get to the door and you knock, take us through that process. Well, I got to the door and I was ready for a good firm. knock, And I had been told in advance that Art would be sit seated. You know, he's 96 years old, so he was not going to be at the yard doing, doing push ups. I knew that. I knew he'd be seated, and I knew that his wife was going to answer the door, and that his family were there, sons and daughters and daughter-in-law and son-in-law. So it would, be, it would be a great family reunion and a great piece of information for someone who gave so much to pro football for so many years. Commissioner, what would the – if you could take us back and just relive the moment of seeing the family's faces and just the, over, the joy that they had, what was that experience like? Well, it was uh, phenomenal, you know, it was like uh, people congratulating a bride and groom on wedding day. I mean, it's that kind of energy, that kind of excitement. And, uh, you know, they told me that Art had been told by somebody that he would be getting a letter from the Hall of Fame and that he would every day he might or every other day he might say something about it. Is the mailman come yet? And uh, so we were laughing from the outset. I mean, laughing with joy and, and laughing with tears but also laughing about some of the backstory, which is that Art was waiting for the mailman and I was the mailman. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And as you mentioned, he would come knock on your door when you were commissioner. If you could talk about that personal relationship that you know you have with Art and how proud are you for him to have this moment? Well, you know, Art came you know, off the field, I guess, and became the head of officiating. I think it was 1968 for Pete Rosell, the commissioner at that time. And it was one year later that I started working on NFL business as a young attorney. And uh, right off the bat in the early 70s, I was working with the officiating department with Art on some lawsuits that involved if, so collateral involvement of, of officiating and the ground rules about injured players on the field and things like that. So I knew Art by the time I became commissioner for 20 years and then worked with him for another 10 years. Uh, Jerry Seaman came in early, but Art was a consultant to the end of 1999 when we and we had him in NFL Europe. So 30 years of personal relationships and relying on Art. And, you know, Art was one of those people, if you, if you gave him a job to do, 
you know it was going to be done and done well. And, and he also was uh, deferential in the sense that he appreciated that, that, that there was so much going on in the league with 30, 28, 30, 32 teams and so many different relationships that the commissioner's time was, was valuable as he saw it, but it was always valuable to get him in the, in the room and, and hear him firsthand talk about what's going on on the field with the officials. When you look back at Art's career, what, what, what are some of the things that he displayed that you knew one day he would be recognized by the Pro Football Hall of Fame and well, be in think, the Hall of Fame? I think it was, you know, his integrity and his in-depth understanding of the game and of the rules of the game and of the complexity of officiating. Uh, you know, it's easy to look at a football game and say, well, they blew that call, they blew this call. But when you, when you really understand, and I, I, I used to go to training camp and ask, Coaches or sometimes officials were at training camp during the summer to work with the players. And I'd stand on the sideline with an official or a group of officials and say, tell me what you're looking at. Well, it's not easy even to see who, who you're looking at, but to, but to follow it. And then when there's an incept, interception or a fumble and the, and the traffic goes from this direction to that direction, it is so complicated and covering such a big field. But Art understood that and he, and he could simplify it for people and he could assure people that it was being done in the right way to ensure integrity in the calls. And then his integrity in explaining the calls to coaches and others was phenomenal. What type of person, what type of man was he off the field, sir? Well, he was a serious family man. I mean, he didn't uh, hang around and go to the bars at night. You know, when he was finished working, he got on the train and went home or, or he went to the hotel and slept overnight, maybe at the Yale Club or something like that, where we had officials stay from time to time because it was two blocks from the league office. Uh, so he was, uh, from my perspective, he was, he was a full-time worker and then some. And uh, long hours were a part of his gig. He knew that. And uh, he knew that the coaches were working long hours. His own people were working long hours. You know, he, he was there when they he part of, instituted the idea of, of every official getting a, a report every week. And to do that, to, 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 to look at every game film on Monday and Tuesday, how many, 16 games, many weeks, and then have a report for every official and every crew going back by early Wednesday, maybe, and then working with the officials to talk to them about what was in their report that was good or maybe indifferent or maybe not so good. It was, it's a time-consuming job, and, and he, rec he recognized that. So there's, there's not a lot of time to think about going to see a Knicks game or going to see a Yankees game in, during the playoffs. That was not hard. You mentioned indifferent and commissioner, if you don't mind sharing, if you would, you know, some of those challenging conversations that, you know, you may have had to have, you know, with art regarding a, a, a call or a, a blown call, a missed call or whatever, or something that should have been called. You know, early on my first few years as commissioner, maybe my first year as commissioner, Bill, I had a conversation with Bill Walsh. He was in to see me talk about various things. And I remember one of the things he said was that you need to review the officiating in every game, but you need to know the difference between a complaint from a team that won and a complaint from a team that lost. And he, and he said, if, if a team won a game and they're complaining about the officiating, that's a, that's a very serious thing because they, they're not trying to lay off responsibility on someone else. It's inevitable if you've lost you're looking to figure out why, and sometimes you feel, well, we got a short end of the stick with the officiating. So there were many moments where, where Art and later Jerry Seaman would have to come in and sit with me, and Roger Goodell at the time was dealing with football operations, and really go through film and, and, and look at a play, not, not just once, but maybe eight or ten times, and, 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 and explain to me, well, you, you say they got it half right, which half they get right and which half did they get wrong? And uh, sometimes it was just a delay in reaching a conclusion. But there was always that kind of a session almost every week. There were a few, we got to the point where on Monday morning I would get a report and say, here's, here's the four or five plays that you're gonna have to spend time on today with the officiating department. There might be 20 others that you could put off till Tuesday, but on Monday you gotta deal with these because the teams need to know, the players need to know, the coaches, the owners need to know, and the public needs to know what went wrong and why, if it went wrong. Right, right. Wow. Wow. And Commissioner, when you look at this year's class in Tony Baselli, Cliff Branch, Leroy Butler, we're talking about Mr. Art McNally, Sam Mills, Richard Seymour, Dick Vermeil, 
and Bryant Young. How proud are you of these men to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Well, it's really an amazing group. Every year, it's it's an amazing group. But uh, you know, I was the commissioner when some of these young men then came into the league. I mean, Baselli came in with Jacksonville. That was obviously an expansion team. So I had already been a commissioner five years or so before he came in with with Jacksonville, and uh, Sam Mills, same thing with Carolina, and of course Dick Vermeil was very visible in pro football before I was the commissioner. But it's, it's an amazing group. And uh, I think that uh, it's not just great talent, but pe- really good people of integrity, not just art, but they're all people of integrity who are working hard off the field as much as they work on the field. They work, they're in the community doing things that help the community, help the public and, and acquitted them very well. And lastly, Commissioner, before we let you go, just overall, what did it mean to you to have this opportunity and this honor to usher in Art McNally into the Pro Football Hall of Fame? Well, I thought it was a very unique honor. Uh, you know, two years ago, I wasn't in the Hall of Fame, and now I am. And uh, but then, of course, until I got the phone call several weeks ago, I didn't know that I would be knocking on doors instead of Dave Baker knocking on doors, that there would be a new policy. So for me to be knocking on the door of a hall of a new inductee and for, for it to be someone as close to me as I was to Art, that was a special thrill. Plus, I knew that he was 96 years old. He's 15 years older than me. I think I'm old. Well, 96 is a long, a long way from 81 to 96. And I knew how much it meant to his family, to his wife and his children and, his, and everyone else in the family. And of course, when, when I finished talking to Art, I gave him a Hall of Fame hat and then before long, his kids were off in different rooms giving interviews and the smiles on their face, you know, it was so bright. You could turn out the lights and lit up, the, lit up the room with the smiles. Well, Commissioner Tagliabu, we thank you so much for giving us your time and reliving that moment of ushering in Pro Football Hall of Famer and from the class of 2022, Mr. Art McNally. Thank you, Commissioner Tagliabu. Thank you very much. Glad had to do it. What an amazing story, and we want to thank you for joining us right here on The Mission. Former NFL's VP of Officiating from 2013 to 2017, Mr. Dean Blandino had this to say about Mr. McNally. His integrity is second to none, and there isn't a person alive who has contributed more to the NFL over a longer period of time than Art. And basically, that is what Commissioner Tagliabu was saying uh, during this episode of The Mission. And once again, we thank you so much. And don't forget, you can shop for exclusive class of 2022 gear online at profootballhof.com. Well, once again, thank you for joining us right here on The Mission. Next episode, we're going to get a chance to hear from Pro Football Hall of Famer Anthony Munoz as he knocked on the door of Tony Baselli. I'm Jameer Howerton. We'll see you next time. 